Oh, yeah. Alright, there we go, there we go. We yeah. live! See, there's some people on my live. Hello, everybody. Hi! Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me flip this up a little bit. Without messing stuff up. Right. Let <laughs> 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 yeah. me just go back a little bit. What's going on, there, everybody? We'll give everybody a few minutes to log in. We I'm appreciate trying to join. it. Huh? Is somebody trying to join the live? I'm trying to join. Mm -mm. You're red dot. Right. <laughs> That's what that means? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. You've <laughs> not been invited yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> We're in the process of getting everything set up. Oops. Ooh. Yeah, just no. <laughs> give me my phone. Please, just give me my phone. Thank you. Stand stuff up. It's okay. Start it and then just look it right there. Thank you, thank you. It's okay. Y'all look it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, welcome everybody. This is D45 and I'm Zach Love. Zach Love and we are coming. Um, to you from Love Pursuit, and this is actually our first Facebook Live um, video, so we're excited about that. So we want to welcome all of our LP family, and those who are newcomers, we'd like to welcome you to the family as we're getting ready to kick off 2019 in an awesome way. And so if you have not already liked our Facebook page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, um, please do so. Uh, we'll leave that information towards the bottom of the um, video um, before we conclude on today. And so let's just go around and introduce everybody. Again, I'm D45. I'm, uh, I go by CK. Uh, yeah, CK. Copper can. Copper vibrations is mine and my wife company. Peace, family. I am CQ and I am co-owner of Copper Vibrations. So happy to be here with you all. Oh, yes, I am <laughs> Zach Love, um, co-founder of Love's Pursuit as well, so yeah. Yeah, and so um, Love Pursuit is a company that I envision, I brought Zach Love on my team because we actually share a lot of the same values as it relates to love. And one of the things that I found out living life and life itself is I seem to always be on a pursuit of love, whether it's loving myself Loving God, loving an intimate partner, loving my family. I'm always in growing development in that area. And Zach, you want to say anything in regards to? Um, love is a great thing. Um, it was hard for me to love at first, but as I embarked and embraced in my journey and got up on copper vibrations, I found out about my root chakras and my heart chakra. I'm still working on my heart chakra and it's only getting better. So, yeah. So, yeah, at the end of the day, when it comes to loving, you know, it's bigger than just ourselves. We need a whole community to teach us how to love and how to engage different parts of ourselves. So here I love pursuit. There's three areas that we always try to nurture. That's one, our body, two, our soul, and three, our spirit. And so with that said, uh, we welcome you to again subscribe and or subscribe to our YouTube channel or like our Facebook page. Uh, we are a new business. We just started in November and we're you know trying to keep this momentum going. So your love and support would mean a great deal to us. Also, we are in um, Greensboro, North Carolina. Yay! Yay! I have never been to Greensboro. Oh wow! Is this considered the country? Yes. <laughs> So we're in the country. <laughs> we're in the country. <laughs> it's a small, small city. It's a small city. It's, it's a big, well, it's, it's a third, city. it's the third biggest in North, North Carolina. Carolina. In North Carolina. In North Carolina. Yeah. So it's the third largest city. It's still in the country. <laughs> it's a small well, it's city. been beautiful. I think it's been beautiful. Um, a lot of um, trees, a lot of, um, well, I saw some agriculture on the, uh, on the way here. So it's a beautiful city, but this is our first time here. And since we were here, we decided to do a wellness shake party. So if you're looking to get fit, you're trying to um, get your health back to a place where you are more comfortable, I ask you to join us today between six and nine, Zach? Between six and nine. And the address is the Residence Inn in Greensboro Airport. It's 7616 Thorndike Road. 
So if you live in the Greensboro area or anywhere in a surrounding city, we ask you to join us tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. I guarantee you we will change your life if you give us an opportunity. Um, so let's talk about, well, this is something that we have not talked about, copper, talked to cop, Copper Vibrations about. So Zach and I were talking and we decided to do some pro promotional gifts. And so um, what we're asking you guys to do, we are going to buy a gift or something from Copper, Vi Fi copper Vibrations and we're going to offer that gift to y'all. So if we can get you guys to get as many subscribers um, as you can to our YouTube channel, the person with the highest or the most subscribers, we are going to offer two gifts to the, um, the two highest individuals. And so in order to do that, we ask you to, one, reach out to your friends and ask them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, two, have them text um, your name after they subscribe to the number 444-465-3883, okay? Again, that number is 444-465-3883. All you have to do is reach out to your friends, your family, and say, hey, Love Pursuit is doing wonderful things. They're working on the body, the soul, and the spirit. We're trying to get everybody to the point where we're loving ourselves and loving others that much more this year. Go ahead and subscribe to that page. Again, the number is 444-65-3883. So once they have um, hit the subscribe button, you want to give them that telephone number, and at that point, they're going to text us. And we'll go from there. You have until January the 8th Monday. They can keep clicking the subscribe button to January 8th at 1159. And on our Facebook page on January 11th, we're going to announce who those top winners are. Anything you want to add to that? Um, just make sure you click like and subscribe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So at this moment, um, at this point, we're going to do a breathing exercise because I believe in cleansing. We're going to do a breathing exercise. And at that point, Zach is going to take, take over. Okay. All right, so I want you guys to find a little quiet space. I'll give you a little few seconds to do that. All right, find you a quiet space. You can be in the corner of your house. You can sit right there in the middle of the floor. I mean, if you're in a restaurant, I mean, I really don't care. You go ahead and sit out in the middle of the floor. <laughs> go ahead. Just make yourself comfortable where are, wherever you are. I, so what we're going to do, again, I told you we're constantly working on the body, the soul, and the spirit. So we're going to do a breathing exercise. So the first breath, we're going to inhale. We're going to inhale love. Then we're going to exhale unconditional love. The second breath is for the, um, the soul. We're going to inhale hope. And we're going to exhale infinite possibilities. Feel my blood pressure going down. <laughs> and the last breath is going to be up for our higher consciousness. We're going to inhale faith. And we're going to exhale faithfulness. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How do you guys feel? How do y'all feel after that? I feel great. You feel great? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to turn it over to Zach right now. We're going to get this interview um, popping. Then after that, we are hopefully going to see some crystals from Copper Vibrations. Okay. <laughs> yes, let me give you guys a brief introduction about how I discovered um, crystals. So, I went to go see Solange Afropunk, and I've always been fascinated with the crystals and the healing properties that they have. So, it was a lady there, I don't remember her name, but um, I bought a crystal ring and I, I fell in love with the healing powers of the crystals. So I posted a picture with me and my crystals and copper vibrations. It was October 19th of last year to be exact popped up and I liked and followed them. And I remember I ordered this, which was my very first piece. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it was on a, ch a chain link. I didn't wear it because it needed to be clean, but I will never forget. I've been ordering from them ever since. All the pieces that you see on my page, my rings, this was a custom piece that was Copper Kings that he let me buy, and I, I, this is one of my favorite pieces as well. And on one of me, my too. <laughs> <laughs> and on me meeting them, they just, just showered me with love because they knew I was coming from a genuine place. 
and I became a part of um, the Copper Vibe Tribe, which is amazing, which is embarks on healing. You got to do the work. You got to grow. And I'm doing the work. And some things I don't like what I see, but most of us don't when we mm -hmm. have to do our homework. We have to work on ourselves. So, mm -hmm. yes. And um, it's just been an amazing experience from Copper King, Copper Queen, and the family, the Copper Vibration, the Copper Vibe Tribe family. Everybody has just been amazing with all the love and everything. Okay, awesome. Well, um, my well, Zach introduced me to this family, mm -hmm. and um, he bought me a it's called a um, rose quartz. And Zach came and said, "Hey, I want you to um, wear this rose quartz. It's gonna uh, course is gonna make you very emotional." Uh, and and I, all of my friends that really know me, y'all know I'm very honest and blunt about most things. So when he told me that, I was like, "Oh, yeah, right." <laughs> Whatever. And so, but even when people offer me things, I still adhere. I, um, since I trust Zach, I went ahead and I took that next step. And so I started wearing a jewelry. And let me tell you, Zach jewelry, you see how big that stone is on his neck? He likes big jewelry. I personally don't like big jewelry. And so the, the, the piece that he bought me was gaudy. It was just big. It was just over the top. So I, I went walking around and felt, felt like I had an anchor on my neck. But I wore this piece for about two, I'm going to say it was two weeks. And when I tell you everything that he said came to pass, I remember sitting in church. And um, I don't know, we had a visiting pastor and he started preaching. And all of a sudden, my whole heart opened. I felt my heart opening up and I started mm -hmm. crying. And wow. that whole emotional experience that he talked about, it happened. And it has not stopped since. And so... Um, I always laugh at him when he says sometimes he got to take some of his pieces off. <laughs> and because again, I didn't believe him. And so it got to the point where I had to literally take that chain and that, that ring off. And I was like, I'm so worn out. I'm exhausted. I can't do it no more. God, we're going to have to come back and, and visit this. And that's when I started investing more um, into the crown chakra stones versus my um, heart chakra stone. So, mm -hmm. and that's it. And so, um, Real exact kind of introduce because you know he started this. I think it's only appropriate for him to, you know, engage them with the first question. So um, I would just want you guys to tell the people more about copper about copper vibrations and what it means to you and what do you want to do. Copper vibrations actually for me started out um, like a friend. I, uh, a friend purchased me a rose quartz yoni egg, and I had seen a couple of posts um, of different friends who were on my timeline talking about crystals, and so I was kind of intrigued, but I didn't really um, pursue like going out actively and getting a crystal. And then one of my really good friends at the time bought me a rose quartz yoni egg, and. Um, at that point, I kind of fell in love with the crystal uh, portion. I saw um, an aunt that I wanted uh, made on copper, like just going through Instagram, and I was letting CK know about it. And, um, you know, we just, he we, we turned it into a family activity of making aunts at the time because Fawaz was a little... Well, this was a little tight at the time, and many of you all know that copper jewelry can be expensive in some places, and so um, uh, we started doing an activity with the children. We made, like, clay um, onks. We made some wood onks. We made some paper mache onks. Huh? Um, so my apologies, y'all, the children. <laughs> Okay, so, no, because I don't want you to, no, <laughs> go ahead. What part you don't want me to do? Yeah, my wife wanted a aunt, a copper aunt she seen online. Uh, I didn't want to pay for it. There go. It was expensive. At least <laughs> I felt it was. So I was like, I could make you one. And I tried to make it out of wood. I tried to make it out of paper mache. Not only I was trying to make these things. We made it into a house thing where we all was creating. It was fun. The stuff I made was very ugly and it did not work. <laughs> and then for Mother's Day, I bought her a copper arm. 
it wasn't from the site. It was from somebody else, a local one. It was okay. She liked it. At least she claimed she did. And I was like, I could do this. And one day we was out, and she and uh, I was like, what you want to do today? And she was like, you say you was going to make me a copper aunt. So we went and we bought copper from Lowe's. And we bought the thickest wire you could possibly find. We could possibly we find. We only had $42. On top of that, yeah. On top of that. We were broke. Broke, broke, broke. It <laughs> oh, wasn't yeah. that he didn't want to buy it. We just didn't have any money. And if we oh, would have yeah. had money, he probably would have bought it. <laughs> that, that is 100% true. <laughs> when I have money, she can have whatever she wanted, no matter the price. But at that time, we was financially struggling. And it was, it was, it was a strain. We it just paid our bills, strange. so we had like $42 left. You know how you make it to that, and then you pay those bills, and then you're looking at the money like this, mm-hmm. but we still always, even when um, the finances wasn't so great, found a way to show love to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and he asked me, what did I want? And I said, I want you to make me an up. And then we went to Lowe's and bought wow. copper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we were so broke that I remember her birthday. The only thing I gave her was a poem. And in the poem, in the poem, I basically was saying... It was nice. It was a handmade poem, card. In the poem, I mean, And it had little earrings attached to it. It was a little no, butterfly that, earrings. Nah, birthday, birthday... Um, oh, birthday suit. Birthday suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wrote me a poem in called birthday poem, suit. In the poem, I was like, I'm sorry, that's all I can hear you. <laughs> It was that real. <laughs> and, but Copper Vibrations was really birthed out of love. It was birthed out of, you know, the desire to please my wife and also the desire for her. Like the, the crystals, the stones, the copper, she wanted it. And I wanted to give it to her. And I couldn't afford it, to be honest. So I made it. All right, y'all heard that. The desires to please and make your partner, your wife, happy. I mean, I think that's actually what we kind of stand for and it's funny that my first stone was rose quartz and your oh, first stone was rose. <laughs> let me tell you if you don't have a rose, rose quartz, quartz get, get right. a rose quartz yeah, it right. will attract all kind of love all yes. kind of stuff towards you and you'll wake up and like well who was this sending me a text and i mean people will come out the woodworks uh-huh. rose quartz is a very well for me i think it's a very powerful stone so let's actually this since i think the rose quartz is a powerful stone what of the the I would say the top five crystals or stones that you would say folks need to run to? Folks need okay. to run folks to. need to run to rose quartz. Amen. Clear quartz. Clear quartz. <laughs> black tourmaline, aka hater blocker. Yes. Carnelian. Yeah. And the fifth one that everybody should possibly have would be Moldavite. I would have said citrine. Oh, citrine. Yeah, it's a t- yeah. See, that fifth one need, really depends on you. Mm-hmm. Okay. You might need Motivite, or you, know, you might need Citrine. Like, yes. Because yeah. Motivite is another powerful heart chakra, heart chakra stone. And the unique thing about Motivite is it does a complete heart flush. Mm. So, um, you'll hear people often talk about the Motivite flush and experiencing the Motivite flush is when you wear the stone past regressions and past emotions that you may have buried deep within the heart comes to the surface oftentimes people find themselves weeping i did not weep but when i first put on motivate a lot like your experience i it was too much emotion for me it was too it was like whoa okay and i wasn't prepared or in the space at that time to deal with it because financially things were a little rough at the time and we were trying to manage business and business. We had brick and mortars and a shop in the mall. Like we were just balance, trying to balance a lot. And uh, I just wasn't prepared for Motivite at that time. But just like CK said, I definitely agree that your fifth stone really depends on you. And if you're unsure about um, what you should what you should choose for your fifth stone, go into your local metaphysical shop and just pick up stones and see what your what resonates with you um when you get to that fifth stone but i say the number one first stone is clear quartz um Mm. because clear quartz is an energy amplifier Mm -hmm. so it's going to amplify any type of energy that you're trying to project 
Clear quartz is also a transmitter of energy. It receives energy. It's easily programmable with any intention. So say that you may need a specific stone for a specific reason, like citrine, but you don't have a citrine. You can program a clear quartz with the citrine energy just because clear quartz is that powerful um, to hold your words right. and affirmations. And correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but from my understanding when I did my research, the clear quartz is... It balances all chakras, is that mm -hmm. correct? It is a master healer. A master healer. There they often go. call it the master healer. Mm -hmm. It balances all chakras. You can actually do a small exercise with someone and you can hold a clear quartz in your hand uh, with, the, with the point. And I can uh, hold a clear quartz in my hand, you projecting energy out. The other person projecting energy out. And you can actually think a thought. Try this with someone. And think a thought, whatever it may be, even if the person is not receptive to receiving that information, their face is going to change, their body language is going to change, or they're going to speak exactly what you were thinking. So that's the powerful thing about um, clear quartz, because it is an energy transmitter. So it's the number one stone you should get first, in my opinion. Okay. This stone been with us for a very long time we had a, a, a spot in the mall and then we had a, a location a storefront this was left in the storefront and we went to a different storefront we moved out he bought that for me as a gift yeah and i was sad i mourned over this stone because we left it and it, it was at least three four five months later i go back to the storefront which is now boarded up and closed and i go to who used to have the shop beside us and I talked to him in his new shop, and he was like, he pulls it out. Like, it's a box of your stuff. Wow. We were just waiting for you to come <laughs> in. And, and it, it made his way back. And it's it a. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, sometimes stones leave you, and sometimes they come back. And it's great to come back. So that's something else Zach told me that I haven't, I don't believe. <laughs> so that, that, yeah, I haven't experienced that yet. So. It's probably going to slap me in the face one day and I'm going to have to come back and say, yeah, you were right. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, let's see. You already told us some of your go-to crystals. Um, what advice do, would you give to people who are um, frustrated and ready to give up? Ooh, in what, in what capacity? Just overall just, just in general? Overall in general, yes. Never give up. <laughs> we talked about the struggle, you know. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure once Something. you guys took off, y'all ran into some other barriers probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, we ran into things, many barriers. Some things you, you, you give up on and some things you can't give up on. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you got to step back to take a running leap. Like, we, was, we had storefronts. We talked about that. We was in one storefront that was not generating money. And it made it, it. It was so much hell. It it. It's hard to speak on, baby. You want to talk? About yes, <laughs> yes. So we were in this particular storefront. So like we said, we started off at um, online with the Etsy shop, and then we uh, ended up getting the storefront in the local mall here in Greensboro, Four Seasons Mall, at a kiosk. And the rent was astronomical. I mean, we were paying, it was during holiday season. I think we spent like $6,000 on rent um, in the uh, Four Seasons Mall. And that was just for two months. Um, and uh, we so we, just, we got a new opportunity. And then that opportunity closed. Like, it was the best opportunity. It was kind of like yeah, a perfect we fit for us. We because we was in a mall, our name spread throughout the city, and it gave us a foothold in, in Greensboro. Like, we was known, and it also made me fast. I was making stuff people walk up, and I make it for mm -hmm. them, and it was something to watch. That's how I learned. So, it created the, it was the brand, so it, have to help it created our brand, it created our, wow. our image, and from that, we went into a local black shop, and he said he had a spot that he would like for us to put a, you know, to be in. And we negotiated and bought half the bought half the, the store, building. half mm -hmm. the half the building was ours. While we still had, having the place in the mall, yeah, so we, we were running keys, both locations. And we were running two locations, and that location started to pop, started to bubble. People was coming, 
money was flowing. It wasn't all that great, but it was a flow with to two it. Store, you imagine with two storefronts, mm-hmm. you know, money is flowing, but you don't really get to experience that money like many new businesses and entrepreneurship. If you, many of you all are new out there, in the first beginning, you're going to have to spend money in order to make money. In order to build your brand, you're going to have to do things that people say is that's not that wise or, you know, you probably should do something differently because it, if we had not been in those locations spending that amount of money, we wouldn't have met all of the people that we met. Like he said, every time we went into a location, people jumped up to greet us, to hold our hand. They were like, y'all cop about, we think we're just walking in and Mm -hmm. like, Shop or whatever, and they're like, "Y'all couple vibration, local fame." You know, you get that first (laughs) local fame, but we wouldn't have been able to achieve that local fame had we not up front took a leap, like he said, taking that leap. But then, after you make that leap, so then you make a series of decisions after that. So we had this shop. We repainted, redid it. We made it copper vibrations and things. So it was like other people's stuff in half the store and the other half is ours. And people started to come and it started to bubble. We did so good that the whole building got shut Can down. Transfer? Can you uh, translate bubble? <laughs> we started to bubble. We started to... <laughs> our name started to go out and it was being received and people was coming in. Mm-hmm. Business increased. Yeah, it increased. Mm-hmm. When, a cop, when a pop start bubbling over... You can see, uh, you can overflow. see, a, you yeah. can see the overflow and the potential of super greatness. I was seeing like it was about to go to the next level. We was, we was preparing for that, and we was in a prime location. When it comes to business, prime location is key, mm-hmm. and we was in a key spot. But because we did so well with the overflow of people, it shut the whole. Like we had one storefront. It was three storefronts. Our storefront started to do so good. The whole three storefronts got shut down. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to leave. Everybody had to move because the people who really owned the whole place. The parking. And yeah. People, complain, complain about people the started parking. complaining over the parking. Wow. Over, uh, yeah. You know. Hating. Just hating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it wasn't yeah. supposed to be sub leads to us. And, yeah. you know, just different things like that. So we got a letter. You have to move out by this date really quickly. Mm-hmm. And so at the time, my mother is a pastor. And my mother was looking for a building to move her church into. She found a place. And she found a building and was um, asked us, did we want to share in that space with her? And so we went into that space. It was an old building. <laughs> a I, building. Say an aspect of it. Mm-hmm. They gave her mother a certain price because it was just her. But the space was, was a nice size space, but it was older. So she told us that number. We liked that number. Like, and yeah, we said, we let's go. That. <laughs> when we, I wanted to have my name on the lease because I we just went through something where we just lost. And yeah, we built right. it up, and then we lost. So I'm like, hold up. We ain't yeah. losing like that no more. My name need to be, need to be on it. So me and her went together and mm-hmm. explained how both of us is going to have, we're going to have half the building, and she's going to have half the building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And right then, he changed the price on us. He said the price was only this small price because it was just her growing. <laughs> and it would have grown into this. But since it's two of y'all, it's now this large price. And the large price was like, hold up, we ain't ready. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah. we, but we already walked into that place, and her mama was ready. Yeah. And I had red flags, like, oh, he, he had red flags, <laughs> and I was so passionate because it was so important for me at the time. The way my thinking was, and this is how we can all get stuck in this one track way of thinking i was like we have in order for us to be a business we have to have a storefront like that was just ingrained in my thinking and um i also wanted a community center because my heart and my passion was about community and let's build a community garden and at this place show potential for a community garden and for other artists local artists in the community to come and have a space where um they could create and her mama was so um, great and gracious. Yeah. She put up a large portion of the money to get into the building. Mm-hmm. So put we put up money it. too, but, but she, she put up money. more than us. Mm-hmm. She she invested in this, so we invested with her. Mm-hmm. So it was a partnership. It was a it was it was family. And she had been laid off for a year, so she's investing her personal money that's expected to help her live. 
so, into this. So we was tied. Now we now one of the questions was when is it time to give up? Uh, uh, do, is it ever a time? time yeah. We was tied into this, and and it wasn't in prime real estate. It was prime area. It was no longer a spot where people was coming. Our last spot it was, was prom. People was coming in was on easily. Main, it was main, on the main. It was by college, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we had those people. Now we was more secluded that and on the other way. side of town, mm-hmm. where people had to travel travel to get to us, and they did not travel often. <laughs> yeah. right. The bus no. bus wasn't even on a good schedule. Yeah. <laughs> those who came was those that we fed uh, in a lot of different ways. Those who came was those that we were in need. Was in need that needed to be around the crystals and stones. Those that needed to be grounded, soak up needed the to be so needed to energy. feel good food. I was cooking vegan food um, for the community, and it was kind of really um, it wasn't really many places you could find vegan food that wasn't soy based or, or things like that. So I was cooking vegan food um, and offering it to the community as well out of that space. Um, and I was, it was, the plan was to make money, but it wasn't really happening like that. You know, you end up feeding people. If somebody's hungry, you feed them. So, um, CK and I marriage kind of took a, a nosedive because CK is a very logical, logical, rational person. So these are for people who are in business and they are in a partnership or a marriage together. This is one of the things that's going to happen you know, just because this is the cycle of life, this is what grows you and develop you in your partnership. CK being a very rational-minded person and me being a very emotional person, he saw, like, this is not going to work. We're, ki- we're killing ourselves financially trying to hold up this building, um, trying to pay for our um, space to live. We had three children trying to take care of all of them and all of their needs, as well as he was helping out his mom. So it was just... We were trying to do a lot at that time, and I was still fighting, like, no, we're going to stay in here. This is about community. This is the <laughs> only reason I'm doing this is so, for community. So we was in a place, and community-wise, we had a community garden. We was doing moon parties. We was, like, where people's doing rich, uh, doing will and decrees, and it's like people's getting their life right. People, you know, it's good. That energy right there was high. But financially, we was low. We were struggling to pay the rent there, and we were struggling to pay the rent at our home. We always paid the rent at our, at our home, though, because you no know we just what. refused. We paying rent. <laughs> we we might rent. struggle in other rent areas, but rent got paid. <laughs> but it was a struggle, and what I did was I calculated. I looked at it for a long stretch. Like, all right, let's say we stay here for a year or two. What will that look like? And I did not see people coming, period. It didn't look like a place. It wasn't a place where people with money came. And when they did came, come, they spent some money, but they didn't come back. <laughs> it had that energy of a community center. Of, I tried saging that place. <laughs> I tried putting crystals all around that place. It was just the energy of that place and its location. I still believe. Um, it was to a this church. Day. And it was a church. And so with was, the church, it, it was. was a church. Yeah, yeah. Can I finish? Yeah. But it was a church. And um, the energies of the church, as well as us at Copper Vibrations, start literally competing with one another. Not from a bad sense of there was no there was no drama. We wasn't no we didn't have drama. We wasn't arguing. But the two energies couldn't find their way to merge within that place. And on top of that, you know, just location is everything too. When you're thinking about. Um, real estate across the street was a cemetery, you know, over here it was a game room, like, um, like a fish tables game type place where people go gamble and lose their money. Like it was just, and then there was like a space where all the drunks and drug people yeah, hung out. out. So it was just the energy of that whole entire place was just difficult. And on top of that, in our marriage, we was going through, we was arguing every day in fr- and now it's to the point where it's in front of people because I'm like, no, we're going to stay. He's like, no, give up. Let's go. And I'm like, you just yeah. want to give up on people? Yeah. So <laughs> the question was, is it time to give up? Like, so It was time for us to sit down with her mama and also sit down with the contract, the man who signed the contract for the lease. It was time for us to sit down and have a mature conversation. 
this is financially not working for us. We need an exit strategy. You don't supposed to just disappear like her mama put up. But what happened up before money. then? No, before then, CK oh, gave up. That. No, before then, no, no. CK gave okay, up. Okay, we can talk about he it. He said, if you're going to stay here, then you make the money. It's what he said. I, what I wanted to do was yeah. have a sit down. She did not want to have a sit down. She okay. wanted to continue to suffer through and be long suffering and just make it happen. <laughs> I was like, it don't, yeah. it, it's not mathematically That's that working. That's hard. That's that hard. She, wanted, she wanted to stay yeah. in there. I wanted to make an exit. But I didn't want to just leave. I wanted to make an exit. I wanted to sit down and maturely have a... We grown ups. Maturely, I'm not making enough money to keep this place. This place is not generating enough money. What will we have to do to leave? Do I need to give you a certain amount of money or leave and continue to give you money? But this is not working for He's me. He's not telling me he gave up. <laughs> she, he gave up she, on me. Yes, yes. I had to because she wasn't... She didn't want to give up. And so I, what I did was, I wisely decided, I said, babe, you're going to burn yourself out. I have your back. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. But we have to leave. Or sooner or later, we have to leave. My wife became the queen. This is where she got her queenness from for <laughs> CQ. She generated money to pay for that spot with me just being her her employee, basically. I became an employee. I, I was emotionally checked out. She go online and she put out damn near begging people in crafty language. It wasn't no please, but it was like real, like, we need to pay our rent. CK just made these things or CK would do these. And she started marketing online and creating money. She was like, I'm not going to sleep till I make $200. And she was online. We wasn't going to do a Facebook Live. No, this wasn't Facebook Live. This was, there was her posting Facebook things Live. from her personal Facebook. And talking. then people commenting. And, like, I was so aggressive with my selling tactics back then. Was it was like, and people it. just comment. You know how people like to come on your stuff when you're selling things? And they just like, I like that. You could buy it. How much? How much would you be willing to pay for something like this? She was and then they wouldn't took. respond, and I would inbox them and be like, "Hey, I will give you this for such and such price." Because it became really aggressive. Because now it's like it's like rent. survival of the fittest, right? And you gotta pay that rent. So that's what um, was happening. And I did that for a little while until I burnt out. But really, what I was waiting she on was hard. for my mom to give me um, permission to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh, that just made me emotional. Oh my goodness! But um, I was waiting on my mom to say it's okay, you can leave. And she I think did. that's when I finally left. Yeah. Yeah. She gave us. She gave us the go ahead. To, she was like, "I got it." To to uh, <laughs> for the exit. But before but I'm like, that, I owe you money. before we got that you exit, took your money. It refined my wife. It 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 made her. It made her great. It made the struggle of it. And, and feeling like I didn't have her back, which I did have her back, but I I wasn't backing her with staying in there. But I didn't come against her. No, I, he didn't come I, against her. I sat back and I let her do her. And she she rose and she raised money. She sold pieces. She did her thing. And I sat back and I tried to come up with a way to make it work. That's when we started getting uh, people. We was making stuff for people and they sell it. We was traveling and finding Wholesalers. People. That's when I identified wholesalers. Yeah. Yeah, that's when I said, Because I okay, had time to make stuff, but I had nobody to make it for. So we structured the business. So even when you're talking about, um, when we speak in the context of giving up, giving up sometimes may mean just a restructure. And so if, if you all um, understand Copper Vibrations, we've taken on many faces and just this, um, three years of being together and we we're always playing around with our business model um to try to get it correct and then at that time it was like okay let's just not focus on walk-in people let's not focus in on individual sales let's get wholesalers then that way we get enough money because these twenty dollars is not working and so i identified 16 people across the country um that we were able to take on as wholesalers and CK helped by walking into some we walked into some places and some malls and asked people yeah. would they carry out we, we even we had a storefront but we went to a, another storefront uh, a Chinese man that sold hair and stuff they had a lot of traffic <laughs> Korean Korean 
I walked in there and I asked them. Beauty supply store. I asked them, can we set up a table outside? We'll pay you and I'll sell my, my, my stuff. So we were still fighting to make it make right. it work. And he gave us permission. We set up a table. Even though we had a store up the street, we set up this table in front of his store. Right. And we made good money and we was directing people to our sure. store. Right. There was so much, oh my God, there was so much um, said that was beautiful. One of the things, was a few things that resonated with me was partnership. You know, you had a partnership with mom. You all had a partnership. Mm-hmm. You had a partnership. With well, yeah. Then you had con- you had a contractor. It's like, okay, how do I manage all of these relationships? How do I manage these partnerships? Mm-hmm. You know, where do my loyalty lie? And it's mm-hmm. with all of them, right? You have mm-hmm. this agreement. And one of the things that I try to teach people all the time is by being impeccable of your word, mm-hmm. having some mm-hmm. sense of integrity. Because mm-hmm. once you burn that bridge, I mean, you can't get back you on. Can't, you can't and, get back on. And the and the beauty of it was, once she said we could leave, and she take she, the church took the whole place, and they're still there. They still there, and we financially help at times. Mm-hmm. We do we do our share, but she took the church as her church. The people who ties. she rent from know that we was leaving. And they bring it back to the original wow. mouth. So, so in us exiting, it worked out for her as well as us. And it was done in a way where we didn't burn our bridges. Now it's increased right. again. And, and, yeah. and that's how you now do business. Now raising it back right. up because that was their whole plan the whole time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that, I mean, that's the way I, I mean, that is honest business just across mm-hmm. the board. I mm-hmm. mean, wow. And we have to, and we have to be that way, you know, um, because oftentimes black businesses get a bad rap for not uh, being impeccable with our word or being dishonest or, you know, just doing bad business. And so it was real important for us uh, moving forward to, as we move Copper Vibrations forward was to always be impeccable with our word. And CK. Uh, is a type of person just he naturally has that integrity anyway. Um, that was one of the things that attracted me to him was his integrity and his ethical nature of always wanting to do the right thing. And uh, so he always encouraged me to have conversation because a lot of times with my emotional nature, I don't even want to have a conversation no more. I was just like, what is done is over yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> no, I get like that. Right? Like, like, yeah. like, what? what? No. I'm just done. And he, he can, I, I think, I feel like he is the person who can have the most difficult conversation ever. Like, even the thing that makes you feel like, no, I don't want to go into it. It can be the most difficult conversation I mean, ever. CK, like, let's go. Let's go talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> you know? I mean, if I don't have it, and I hide from you, you ain't getting it. And if I don't have it, and I come to you and tell you I don't have it, you still not getting it. No matter what, you ain't going to get it. But I might as well tell you to your face, bro, right. you ain't getting it. <laughs> I just don't have it. Just, yeah. Hey, well, if I had it, you have it. I don't have it. When I have it, you got it. <laughs> well, what you going to say? That's messed up, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's messed up. I'm down right now. <laughs> but I will be strong. Yeah. And, and now we strong. So what happened, though, the beauty of it all was my wife became greater at going online. At, at She opened up because she was more closed. I'm a seller. I know how to talk to people and convince them to dig in their pocket and pull out money. That's my strength. She was always good online. But she became better through the pressure of trying to maintain a, a space that we couldn't afford. It was pressure. It was time. It was so much pressure. It was time to back up. It was time to bow out. But before she bowed, she fought for it. And that made her greater. It made her a better seller. It made her a better business partner, a better business owner. It taught her so much that she would have never learned if she wasn't up against that pressure. And they say uh, pressure creates diamonds. Diamonds is crystals and stones. Mm-hmm. The pressure created her to shine more, to to be better. So when when we seen the opportunity to go live and figured out how to generate money off it, she she took it and ran with it because she already became from that experience. Even though I was I backed out before she did, the fact that she stayed in that fire, stayed in that pressure, it made her greater. It made her better. 
So I'm grateful that we had that pressure. And I'm grateful that she stepped up to the plate. So mm-hmm. that's the thing about hindsight. Even though you might see something for those that see us, that does it. You might see a brick wall and you might see a, a challenge. Some people have to go through that to become mm-hmm. better for them. They have to, it's a development and a growth. I had to learn that. And I had, and I learned that the hard way. Like there have been relationships that I've been in um, and friendships that I've had. And I am a seer. I just learned this this year. I see things, but sometimes I see where they supposed to be or where they are going and they don't see what I see. Mm-hmm. So I long suffering. So I stay mm-hmm. in it, mm-hmm. encouraging, motivating. But at the end of the day, I have to let them mm-hmm. go through what they go through mm-hmm. because that's their path. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to get that message. Right. So I, I completely... Right. It's, I mean, it's so important. So love is, when we talk about love, love is duty. Love is responsibility. And uh, we have a duty and a responsibility to one another. And we love our business. So we have a duty and responsibility to all of our customers, too, as well. And And it was amazing that CK, he kept saying, if you would just go online... You know, we could flourish. Your reality would change, and I just could not see it. I could not see the reality change. I didn't. I'm not a seller. Like I'm not really a seller type of person. I'm emotional. <laughs> I want to connect with people, and I just expect through that connection somehow my needs will be met. You know, um, but it, CK encouraged me to get online, and the and the beauty thing about it was I was still able to host that space of community through the copper vibe tribe so once we got online and i was able to do copper vibrations and do the selling part that really didn't give me satisfaction um i was able to create the copper vibe tribe which was a community an online community of people that i had never met physically in person but i only met them online and through that community i'm able to Um, satisfy what I need emotionally and what I need for my heart and then still handle the business aspect of selling to provide for um, our needs and grow our business. So It's your gifts. Your gifts will make room for you if you make room for your gifts. gifts. Oh boy, you better preach. You better (laughs) preach. (laughs) That's good right there. (laughs) And I think we don't do that enough. And uh, I think oftentimes we live in fear so much that we're not holding in on our talents. One of the things that um, I have given the world, which is a mantra I came up with for 2019, is to reconnect, because I'm big with connection. I don't believe in networking, but listening to you guys, I see there's a place for networking and there's a place for connecting. Mm -hmm. You know, someone got to get out there and have the hard conversations and do the hard work. But someone also have to give customer service. That's that healing component, Mm -hmm. right? So you need Mm -hmm. both of them. But yeah, I've been telling them to, one, reconnect with themselves. Mm-hmm. To go ahead and remember, remember some of the things that you did that worked and some of the things that you didn't work. Like you need to understand That's what you've been yourself. through. Yeah. Then sit down and reflect. Mm-hmm. That's what a power and a fuel is. It's yeah. in the reflection stage because you start questioning things. Um, then you start mapping things out and you start having these conversations or these self talks about where I'm going and what I need to do. And once you get that fueling stage like ready and you amped up, then you go ahead and you just reboot and you just kind of take off. So -hmm. that's been my four R's with love, pursuit, just teaching everybody. Make sure you reconnect, remember, reflect, and reboot. But don't get stuck in the remembrance stage because that's what people do. Yeah. They get in their feelings, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And they want to be mad at you. Yeah. Oh, you didn't return my call. Oh, yep. So they just mad at you. You're like, well, why are we aren't friends no more? And right. you realize they mad at you for something petty. Right. 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 And they get stuck. And once you get stuck, you right. start missing those. You're not tapping in those right. gifts and those. Um, I experienced that, people, that within the business aspect of it. Because I'm such an emotional person and I t- I connect with people, right? Um, oftentimes, as the business grows, it's harder for me to make those connections that I first made in the beginning. And I think people end up resenting me for it. So in their mind, it's like, I don't have as much access to her as I did in the beginning. So now... I'm going to get mad about whatever this thing is and I'm not dealing with her anymore. Or I'll pick out something that she said to CK and be like, I can't believe she talked to CK like this. I ain't watching no more. You know, (laughs) I mean, just find any little thing 
to get upset about rather than communicating and saying, hey, queen, in the beginning, mm-hmm. I had so much access to you. We had, I felt like we had a friendship. I felt like we had a relationship. And now it just seems like you're gone off onto this thing. And we have to, when we love each other, though, and that's why I'm, I'm always very, very cautious about telling people that I love them one. CK helped me with that because it used to be things that we just say so flippantly, like, I love you. I love you. And everybody's running around telling everybody that they love them. But the moment someone does something that you don't like, all of that love goes out of the window. And now person don't even know you anymore and they hate you and they hate your guts yeah. and all of those I'm things. Saying, so, I'm saying those words more often because people are saying it to me and they actually mean it. I can see they mean it because y'all have a, a connection. So I give it back because I think that would be kind of rude not to say it. So I say it back because mm-hmm. actually I love y'all as a whole, as a as a group, as a body. But individually, I don't know y'all that well, to be honest. So the way I handle my love, I don't I give it out, but at the same time, I I don't think I don't think it's real to just be walking through life and I love everything and everybody. That person probably gonna be mad, pissed off, and hate. Yeah, it's everybody. a heart chakra issue. It's yeah. an overactivity it's of the heart chakra. And I was able to learn this through this business, through the Copper Vibe Tribe, through um, you know, building our brand online, is that um a lot of our heart chakras is are out of balance. And so as we talk about love and the pursuit of love, um, the heart chakra, I noticed that the people who scream they love you the most are the people that have the that can actually hate you the most too. So that's the paradox of um that's the paradox of love, right? So you got love and then you got hate. And those who heart chakra is out of balance, when they're upset with you, many people do not know how to communicate once yes. they become upset. Yes. And so that communication starts to shut down part. And once the shutdown happens, you can't even get in to try mm-hmm. to re- resolve the relationship. And it's like, I thought you loved me. I can go back and pull up 1,000 posts where you scream, I love you, CQ. I love you, CQ. And, and now you won't even talk to me. And, so, a, like, and, a, and there's a misbalance <laughs> in the belief. Money is energy. Y'all mm-hmm. giving us energy. The products we create, the crystals and stones, is energy. We giving it back. The relationship is being is a give is a it's mutual it's right. give and receive it's, it's it's not misbalanced. When a person get upset with us, they take a stance like they made us or they mm-hmm. I can't you know this money. and that and like you didn't give me money <laughs> like you you bought you, you bought into a service <laughs> right. and if you have an issue with with the service, we could reimburse you or we could figure out how to make it right. But but it turns into a love and hate situation at times. And that and that's not healthy. And you'll experience that in business. And that can either make your business or destroy your business. Because if you go into it emotionally with them too, it can really um harm your business. If you take everything personally um, mm-hmm. It can really uh, harm your business and your ability to be able to interact and develop new relationships and new friendships. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned in 2018 about love is, number one, trying to communicate, um, trying to resolve the issue and right the wrong if I'm given the opportunity. But most people, when they get upset, they don't give you the opportunity to right the wrong because I believe in atonement and I believe that if I wrong someone or um, that I, I have the ability and the power within myself to get beside myself and point um make right the wrong. That's right. And and the truth is, if y'all want us to love y'all, we we are willing. Our hearts is open. It just has to be. It has to be that development relationship, and it has to be a real relationship. Right. It can't be a fake relationship because you ordered a whole bunch of things. We automatically love you, especially if we don't really know you. Like Zach, that ring he has on, that was my personal <laughs> ring. And I did not want to sell it. And I remember when my wife says, he's asking for your ring. And I was like, no, I ain't selling it. <laughs> and then she said, it's Zach. And I said, oh, he can have it. Yeah. And that was from the relationship right. of, of right. actually having, even though this is our first time seeing each other face to face. It's a real relationship, relationship. even before right. the face to face. So y'all can develop a real relationship with us. And it could be a real connection. Mm-hmm. And we have those real connections within the tribe. Some people that we haven't met or we recently met or we going to meet. 
and it's real. But it has to be real. It has to, it has yeah. to be that. I, I agree with that. I mean, I tease Zach all the time. I always mm-hmm. tease Zach and say, I, you know, he's the favorite of the two. <laughs> I say that all the time. I say that all the time. I mean, and it's nothing personal, but I say that because it's... He's been on it's, longer though, right? Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's clear, you know, the relationship... He put in months of work. Yeah. It's months clear the relationship the point, that they have, right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm the stepchild. I'm the stepchild, but... I completely understand what they're saying and I respect mm-hmm. the relationship that they have and I understand that I'm a newbie in this and so you know I go to Zach for just about everything just a yeah just about when regarding any of this stuff I mean he gave me a crystal Bible so um, but yeah that's one of the things him and I kind of tease about because I'll say something I was like no you text her you text her <laughs> <laughs> you the favorite child so but um so let me ask you this because I've I go back and forth with this. When people say they love you, whether it's business or personal, then they they have the ability to turn around and to just throw you under the bus, <laughs> dog you out. In my head, I keep going back and I we were playing because I'm a thinker, and I said it wasn't really true love. Like it right. really wasn't love. It felt like love felt to like them, love. and it felt good. It was emotion and infatuation, mm-hmm. and immediately people can become infatuated because. Money is an exchange of energy, right? When you give somebody your money, you're giving them energy, and they're giving you back energy in the form of a product. And for some people, it creates a high, which actually creates dopamine in the brain. Yes. And so um, when a person, yes. when you're creating that dopamine from that high of that exchange of currency, then you're filling up. But what, say your currency may get low. And you're no longer able to make that transaction in that exchange between you and that individual. Then the dopamine gets low, depression begins to set in, mm-hmm. and then you're looking for a place to put that blame. And so what happens uh, with people in relationships oftentimes is that, number one, we don't understand true love and we don't love ourselves. Because mm-hmm. if we did, we would say, you hurt me or this mm-hmm. hurt when you did this or I don't understand why you're doing this and then you would give a person opportunity to make it right if you're not giving them an opportunity to make it right then go your separate ways don't and down it, talk them don't be bad to them exactly. me personally I in the beginning I used to take it personal now I see the cycle you can ask CK I point them out I already know who's gonna be getting mad and go off and create a Facebook post and yeah, tell all their you. friends and who's gonna try to twist cop on their own because they're mad now you know all of that I already see all of that even before I even before it even starts, I already know if I don't do this for this person or I don't speak to this person every day or if I don't message them, this is going to happen. And so I I'm seen, used to it now. I seen something on Facebook. A person was talking about, I think it's, he called it fish love. He said people have fish love. And the fish love is they love to eat this particular fish. But what's good is it, what is that? That's not good for the fish, though. The fish is not receiving love. It's receiving being eaten, you know, it's getting caught. Like, so a lot of our love, is, which is sad, it's based off of what could you do for, for me. me. Mm-hmm. And yes. when you wear copper vibrations, especially when you first put it on, mm. you getting stopped in the stores. People asking yes. you questions. You are becoming, yes. you become uh, instantly a level of fame. And when she talk about those going off in your brain it really happens like when you walking around and you you feeling that energy of the crystals and the stones and you become in love and infatuated with cq and ck why because we we sold it to you at a very reasonable price and now you're getting this type of love yes. that you're receiving yes now once you true. that's that's off the first part of it you get enough of it and you become you know now known for it you might put on some new pieces. People might not talk to you as much about it. Why? Because you're, they already did it. You you wore that first, that initial thing out. Now you're going into a different, you could grow into a different phase of buying bigger stuff for your house, for getting into the working of the crystals and the stones, learn how to use them. You could grow into that, but you might choose not to. You might look at your bank account and realize you spent so much with copper of <laughs> <laughs> and you feel in some type of way. And next time you ask for something, CQ might not, might not have read your post 
and you feel it some type of way. Like, I can't believe, you know. Mm-hmm. And then so love. she snapped at me. And it, was yeah, like, it, went, from, it, it went from, you know, <laughs> feeding you to <laughs> now you feel like you ain't getting fed. Yeah. And you ready, you ready to turn up. <laughs> and one of the things that I realized as it relates to love is that um, I have accepted the fact that I am love. And I was sent mm-hmm. down here on earth to love. Mm-hmm. And that was huge for me. Um, because the way um, we were raised in my home, it wasn't a whole lot of affection, no hugging, no kissing. Mm-hmm. So when the affection part of my love experience happened, it was very awkward. But I've learned that I can't turn it on or turn it off. Once I love you, I love you. Mm-hmm. And so when people are able to turn it on and off of me, it does not mm-hmm. make a bitter sense. Like mm-hmm. I cannot sit here and tell you I love you. Then you do something, I'm mad at you tomorrow, and I just stop loving you. you. Like, just done. Yeah, that's the strangest thing for me. So, by you being a hot person, do you process like that as well? Do you feel like that as well? Yeah, I feel, I mean, I've gotten to a point, and just because I see it so much, I mean, it happens every other week or maybe every couple of weeks. You that's know, pretty, that's pretty um, frequent. yeah, it's pretty frequent. And at, at first, honestly, to be honest, it hurts my feelings. That's, oh, that's okay. to be honest. My feelings do. Uh, get hurt in a situation and I do for a moment personalize it and then you know I do my meditations and I do through my work and I'm able to move on because I understand that I'm not wearing this jewelry just because I'm trying to make a fashion statement these are tools and if I'm going to spend my money on purchasing these tools then I'm actually going to do the work and there's this is just one component of it I need meditation I need my spirituality. I need my religion. I need all those different tools that makes me. I know I got to take a spiritual bath. I got to do all of these things to do the work because I'm honest about my feelings. I'm no longer punishing myself or feeling guilty for my emotions. I just wear them honestly and then I recognize when they're not right Mm -hmm. and then I'm able to deal with it. And so now I'm more or less like when when it happens, Keep it moving because I've developed I've developed a level uh, a a barrier over that and saying okay this person doesn't love me or doesn't want to interact with me and exchange love there's four point five billion people on this planet there's more people to love there's more people out there who's yeah. needing love and who's needing that exchange and I really don't have time to run after right. you and figure out what's going on with you I'm just not doing it I'm not I'm, I'm not doing that moving forward and it's interesting that most businesses don't have to go through this type of thing yeah. you think about a, a duration or a big business they don't have to go through they, they're not even talking about the things that we're talking about right now they're not even talking they're not even nobody even knows you the, the owners of the business don't even know you're not even trying to engage with you in any shape form or fashion the simple fact that we even engage in these type of conversations the simple fact that we even share the knowledge that we know because we could come here and just twist up your copper sell your jewelry and just go on about our business but the fact that we engage we let you into business let you understand what it feels like as a business owner and as entrepreneurs um, when we're going through this experience we're not perfect by a long shot we miss orders we miss people we you got to think about though in reality in relation to it all how well are you doing and if i had to give myself a grade i would give myself an a minus i'm sorry just out of all the things that we do and the amount of volume that we do and so i have to accept that and be okay with that i can't wear the guilt of everybody who is upset because i have to move forward uh about the love question me and my wife pour out love Mm -hmm. but the love comes from me and her love can run out for individuals though Mm -hmm. outside of me and her and i would hate for the love to have a love issue here but love do run out it can Mm -hmm. it can turn it can turn bloody like a heart your heart could bleed Mm -hmm. out your heart you can have a heart attack the bad boy can stop beating Mm -hmm. and you have issues and going to what it's called cardiac arrest yes (laughs) like this is real life this things happen in real life and it could also happen in the spiritual realm Mm -hmm. like a person could do things and it could it could it could start to just start to die things you know be gone so it's possible but i know the love that we pour out the source of it is me and her it comes from us and it comes from a real honest a real space 
So we pour out love, and that's why y'all give us back love. And when y'all get upset, and y'all try to, you know, if those who do it want to drag our name through mud or, up, you know, want to, you know, wild out, whatever y'all do, it, it really don't bother us besides hurt our feelings. It don't bother us because we are sustained in love. We are protected by love. When it comes to the spiritual realm, the strongest magic is love. Mm -hmm. All of the movies you watch that got to do with magic and anything. Love. And every it's, religion. It's Everything. always love mm -hmm. that breaks the curse. It's always love that conquers, that, evil. That conquers the evil. Is mm -hmm. the love. That's, that's the core of it that brings everything back. And as long as you have that type of love, you are to a certain degree uh, invincible. You are like shielded. Besides your, besides you know, you hurt my feelings. Like we might see somebody wild out that they really can't hurt us though. Besides the wilding out, and we watching it and just feel bad. Mm -hmm. So don't wild out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hurt us. No. We in love. <laughs> I've always, I mean, even though they always talk about miss, you know, miss, miss, uh, missing orders, but. I've, I've had nothing but a good experience. Mm -hmm. And this whole time, I still get stopped to this day, every day, mm -hmm. about my jury. And I always direct people to them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who is following them, but it's just, for me, it's been amazing since day one. So. Thank you, Zach. You have to we support. Did right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's your, and I'm very, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. I'm a mother <laughs> introvert. I stay in the corner. I'm, a, I'm the support being. So being out in the front like this is the first time i've ever done anything like this wow and i'm like very uncomfortable but i'm saying that to say when i go into the stores or the grocery store when i go to church wherever i go you know i'm constantly being stopped and it catches me off guard because i you know i'm from yeah. miami I mean, I mean, <laughs> what? I'm like, what? What? what do you mean what? oh no i'm just asking <laughs> i'm like oh oh you better back up now <laughs> give me 50 feet give me 50 feet <laughs> but yeah and so now again it goes back to you know, love, and I really see you guys as healers, right? Because one day you'll hear about all the mess that I done been through, but when Zach introduced me to my stones and I start my journey with the stones, it kind of changed my life. And so mm -hmm. now it's like, anytime that I wear any type of crystal, I'm constantly attracting people. Wow. And so I'm trying to manage that, right? Because wow. now it's not just about me. Right. And so I had to change my mm -hmm. mindset and say, well, now you're a universal servant. Mm -hmm. You have been given these stones from people who are in the business to mm -hmm. heal. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So how are you going to make sure they understand what you're wearing around your neck mm -hmm. and understand where it's coming from? Because nice ever since piece. I've been, thank you, ever since <laughs> I've been engaging you guys, it's been nothing... But like love, it, and that's when I told him. I like that language. Jack. Oh, thank you. you Called it universal. Le yeah, universal, universal service. service. Yeah, I'm yes. no longer here for yes. myself. I belong to the world. God put me on earth. Yeah, I belong yeah. to the world. And so yeah, and that's how I see it. So we talking about love. How did you all meet? And who was the first yeah. person who? No, no, no. Um we so those of you all don't know, we married really quickly after three weeks. Wow. Um yeah, so we love is, marriage and love person. We love marriage. Yes, the marriage happened really quickly for us and it's not we don't recommend it or we don't discourage it. It's you know when you know you've met the right person. And I don't imagine or can see my life without him. But the in the beginning, I was looking for... So those of you all don't know, I wrote a book called Queen Me and This is My Life Story. It's on Amazon Kindle. You can go get it. It's Queen Me by Monier Essence. Um, and uh, he helped me to write that book. But initially, I wanted that book to come out as a video type of book. And I wanted to tell my story via video and then have it circulate around. We had mutual friends, so I made a post on Facebook. Um, did any videographers want to help me record my book? And uh, somebody put CK, tag CK, or either put his number up there. One of our mutual friends um, put him up there. Now, I had known and heard of him via uh i bought books from him he's a children's books author so i had bought four books from him from my daughter um a few years back but i never actually had an interaction with him we never had a, a conversation yeah oh we didn't 
we didn't never have a talk in person. Yeah, we never had a, yeah, a real yeah. conversation. So, um, he left the books with his brother, and I went and picked them up from his brother. Um, so, uh, yeah, but we had mutual friends, so I knew of him. And, and I knew of her, but I didn't know her. So, we didn't right. know each other. But she always posted pictures of food. Like, mm. she cooks. Mm-hmm. And she was... Putting pictures up. Trying to get a so I did not know her. <laughs> I did not know her. I'm telling you, I know it sounds classic. We, we was friends, and I, I, always, I see her post. And then, I'm not one to, to really be writing and be on Facebook. I guess I'm just a watcher, so I just go through and I watch and I like. Yeah, I just watch <laughs> stuff and I like stuff. So I've been watching her food for before we really sat down and had a conversation. But like she said, I just bought a video camera. I had like a Canon T3i. And somebody was like, he could film you. And she was, so I was like, yeah, but what about your food though? I need, <laughs> I need a plate. So she was like, yeah. So she made me, actually she made me a pie. So I came to get a pie. And when I came, to me, she was, co- like I was, I had to look at I was looking at her. She wasn't realizing it. But I was just. I was looking at it. It was attraction. I was attracted to. I had my son with me, and I was a single dad, and my son was struggling in school, and I was working a third shift job, and I was a full time student at wow. the community college, and I was stressed, and I was a little bitter. I just He's pessimistic. And I just cynical. went through a breakup with. A, I was in a relationship for like three years, and I just going through. You know that was break. Bro, it wasn't even fully broke up, but it was a broke broken Situation. relationship mm-hmm. where I moved out, moved in with my mama and I was paying rent there. I had good money because I was working a full-time job and I was getting that you know, school. That, that school you check. check. School <laughs> check. <laughs> you know about the check. You know about the check. <laughs> when you go to community yeah. college, you see that check. Yeah. Yeah. When you go to a real college, you uh, really a four-year college, you don't really see it. But the community college, I was seeing some G's. <laughs> <laughs> But I was stressed, though. I had good money. had a car. I was living with my mom. I was paying a little rent with her because I ain't lame. I had a room. But I, I wanted to, I had to leave. Like, I was stressed. My son wasn't doing good in school. So when I, when I met her, uh, seeing her, you know, talking to her face to face, I was like, this is what you do. I'm in her house. We in this place. This is the place she had. What we looking at? And now it didn't look like this. All the walls was tore out. The floor was tore yeah. up because I had a sprinkler system pipe froze and burst. It was like mm-hmm. one year when it got really that. It like, was in January, yeah, two thousand and fifteen. So it was like an eighteen degree weather, and it froze the sprinkler system and burst everywhere. So they had to come in and tear up the floors, tear up the walls. So he came into the place, and I'm like, I need the video record. He came and got the pie, so we started recording. Yeah, but I asked her to tutor my son. I said, the school called him, school me. I think that was after the first day. No, that was, that was the first day. I was on it. Oh. I was like, I was like, could you tutor my son? And then I think I came back and told yeah, him about the school Yeah, because you're opportunist, meeting. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I see, I'm a seer. People call that opportunist. You see an opportunity... You supposed to be like they go opportunity and I do nothing. I'm a doer. I wrote books. I made I made a movie. I did, I produce albums. I'm an engineer, producer. I'm a, Draw, I was a maintenance man. Books. Yeah, I did a lot. I'm a doer. You find me doing. I see an right. opportunity. Right. I step in it. So I seen her and I sized her up. I, I like her place. And I'm like, how you afford this? And she like, I cook. <laughs> so she cooked. Took a picture of her plate, put it online, and people bought it. I'm like, you make money off of cooking <laughs> out of your own personal house? He's like, this is a nice place. Like, how do you afford nice this place. cooking? <laughs> so, my mom is calculating. Like, she ain't no joke. I mean, I've seen her plates, too. And she have people come in and get in place and leaving. Like, she had it. She did the thing that I ain't know how to do. I know how to sell, but I don't know how to sell online. She was selling online from day one. Mm-hmm. So, when I met her, I already seen it. And I... I multiplied that. I'm like, do you know who you are? Do you know what you could do? And now you can see it. But I saw it back from day one. And Man. I had just been laid off from my job uh, shortly before meeting him. I was laid off in August of 2014. So at a job I worked for eight years, I was an operation manager at a domestic violence and sexual assault agency. And I had just been laid off. And so that's, I, that's when I picked up cooking. Because cooking kind of became a meditation for me. 
even when I was working uh, that job, I would be so stressed and, you know, just doing so much. And I started to use cooking as a meditation. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at the time I had joined the Nation of Islam. And so they was teaching about healthier cooking and healthier food. And so I started exploring with vegan and vegetarian dishes, alkaline dishes, things like that. So that's where I found that market. Um, because you can charge a little bit more for that food and mostly everybody don't cook that type of food. You know, most plates people sell in their fried chicken, macaroni and cheese. Healthy food. Yeah, so at it was a, like at a real price. She was charging like ten to fifteen dollars a plate and she had clientele. It's still not bad. Mm-hmm. She had clientele mm-hmm. showing up. Mm-hmm. And then she had a couple of plates that was twenty five dollars, but that was like real, real she expensive. Didn't see that. Expensive fish mm-hmm. and nobody, yeah. I ain't never even heard of. I'm like, what are you talking about? What is the sea bass? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but but let's cut the story a little bit. So, what so I started filming her, her life story. So, from day one or day two or three or whatever, I started learning her life. She started telling me all of her life from her childhood. So, I'm getting a crash course like that on her life, and everything I heard, I see her more clearly. And all Most I see, people run away from like, hold up, you did what? All I see is greatness. I'm not going to go into all the things she's done. You can get a book. But I've seen greatness. Every walk of her life is great. Everywhere she stood, she stood on top. Wherever you put her, she bubbled. bubbled. It was bubbling over, and they had to come get her. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, is that real? Her life has been real. I, I used to call her the realest person I met. And at the same time, my son fell in love with her. Because she was tutoring my son. And what I told my son was, if you do one, if you, if you spend good time with your tutor, I will give you one hour of my time of clean, undivided, undivided not me sleeping or not whatever. I'll give you a straight hour. So what do you want to do? And we go to the park, but he just finished with his tutor. So his tutor come with us. So she was coming with us. So we was going out on Dates without date. without yeah. dating. Officially. And it, yeah, and it is in January. Uh, my birthday is January 26th. I was at the house sleep. She was tutoring my son. My mama picked up my son from her. My mama told her that I'm out on a date. Coffee. I was at the house sleep. I wasn't on a date yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was sleeping. Hold up, mom that dropped the bomb? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah right I mean, you know I'm not, your mom don't lie. understand. I don't lie though. She don't lie either. And that's where she, she get it from. Lie. And tell it like it is. But she yeah. made me a cake. <laughs> a full cake. I made him a mama, cake. I made him vegetarian meatballs from scratch. Vegan meatballs from scratch. Hand rolled them bad boys. Um, pasta. January I made the sauce from scratch. Let it cook all day. <laughs> so it could be nice and flavorful. But we wasn't. It wasn't we a date. We never held hands. We never, we never had hands. Kids, like, we never hugged. Hug. But I wanted him because I was so enamored by the fact that he was a single father. And that he was really trying to take care of his son. The fact that he would enlist me as a tutor. That he would have his son with him. Um, I just didn't understand that, like, fathers, ha- i never seen it. I mean, I heard about it, but i never seen it. And seeing it up close and personal, I was just enamored with that. So I wanted to gift him and reward him for his birthday. And uh, his mom said he was out on a date. And it wasn't, when she said that is when I realized I had emotion. Because I thought I was just doing it like, he's a man, I want to reward him. Like, he's doing really good. But when she said he was out on a date, you it took everything in my power to hold myself together. I made a Facebook post. I lied to y'all. I made a Facebook post. I got cake. Who wanted you to come get the cake? People was pulling up getting the cake. But I say one little piece of cake in the corner. One little piece of cake in the corner, and I, I was giving away the food and everything, but I saved one bowl of food and one piece of cake. And that's the only thing and I got for my birthday was that piece of cake. <laughs> and what I did was... My mama came home with my son, and oh, she was like, that girl like you. I told her you was out on a date. I'm like, I'm not on no date. Like, why you say that? But then I went out on a date. The girl I was talking, you know, whatever, my my ex. But I went out on that date, and she didn't give me nothing for my birthday. I paid for everything, and I ended it. I, clear, I made a clear understanding. I made a clear understanding between me and her. But it, yeah, it's over. Like it's over, over. 
So when you guys and, and then yeah. once I did that, me and her started dating. So I don't I don't like that overlapping. Right. You with you cool, somewhat buddy. with this person, then next you know you with that person without without suffering. You know, so I severed Missed that the conversation. Yeah, I had to have that conversation. I had to have my conscience clear. So I did go out on a date, but that date I still didn't. It wasn't no no no. We didn't get together. We just sat down, talked, and it was over. And I woke, and then once I came back, that was January twenty sixth. We was married by February twenty sixth. Wow. Aww. But the the biggest thing, the reason why I married her so quick is what she said. So even during the time when we are uh, going out with the son and all that, she said that she will be married before 2015 is over. And I was like, I was like, wow, so who you marrying? And she didn't know who she was marrying. <laughs> I said, I don't know, but I know I'm getting married 2015 because I said my will and decree on December the 31st, 2014. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to be married because I'm the type of person that when you set a goal or you set um, your will on something, you need to follow it through and you need to complete it. And you need to trust that the universe is going to open it up for you and give you no good thing will God, your higher power, the universe withhold from you. No good thing. And so I knew if there was anything good to come into my life, which I was expecting good. I woke up every day expecting good. I was in a good place in my life um, mentally and spiritually. So I woke up every day expecting good and I knew I was going to get married. It wasn't a shadow of a doubt. Nobody was going to tell me that I wasn't going to get married in 2015 because I wouldn't have. And to be honest, I was not looking for a woman. I was not looking for, for none of this. I was not looking for it. I was in a moment of my life where I felt like I was down and I was trying to strategize how to come up. Cynical. Yeah, I was real cynical and just, ah. That's, that was really my energy at the moment because I was down. I just took a couple of blows. I'm living with my mama. Like, who want to live with their mama? No offense to y'all who live with y'all mama. It's a man thing. It's, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, a man I wasn't thing. one that wanted yeah. to live with my mama. I was, I was looking, I was actively looking for another spot. But it was like, it was just some blows and I'm like, oh, but when I met her and I, and she told me her story and I seen how great she was and I, I have greatness in me, no matter where you put me or what I have, if you interview any of my friends, they be like, that dude crazy. He think he great. <laughs> <laughs> he, don't, he don't be having nothing. <laughs> but he think he on some next level. And I already, I knew I, I know who I am. Just give me enough time and you'll see it. And that's how I believe. And that's the way I walk and talk. But when I met her, I seen her greatness too. And I was like, damn, she greater than me. <laughs> like her abilities, like to a certain degree, is greater than mine. She could go online and captivate people and mm-hmm. have them show up. She could. She, uh, yeah, her abilities. I know her whole story. And it just, it just was like, man, if we was together. Do you know? Like and then and then her power of saying be and it is. I wrote a book called Say Be and It Is before I met her. And it's a story about you say it and then you make it happen. Mm-hmm. Her saying that she will be married before the year's out and the fact that she didn't know who she was marrying was so attractive to me. It was the language that I speak. I speak that type of language. <laughs> I know you say something, it don't matter how outrageous, mm-hmm. if you're willing to walk it, it will become it will be if you live it, if you breathe it, if you fought, you know, you to a certain degree force it. So because of that, I'm like, we, we got married February 26th. I was born January 26th. We met in January. We was married in February 26th. Her birthday is June 26th. My son's birthday is June 26th. They both share the same birthday. The connections was like, you know, 26 is major for us. So in our relationship... Because we didn't know each other, we got married so quick. We had to learn each other, and and the the explosions was so so potentially great. We came up with safe words. So I suggest this in relationships. You should have a safe word. Yes, yes. mine is cotton candy. Yeah, I was twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. Mm-hmm. And our safe word represents our love. Represents, you know, our like. So just to snap out of it, if I'm so mad with her, well. I feel like the love is gone. Just the thought of 26 brings mm-hmm. me back of yeah. our connection. Like, it's it's so real. It's greater than whatever that made me mad. You have a safe word, Zach? Yes. 
What's your? Do, do you want to share? I'm sorry. It's so much. I was going to say, you know, go, 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 in a park together. So physically, again, I'm real big. So I'm um, a body, soul, spirit. So physically, you guys went together. So would you say you guys were having a soulful connection at the time, a spiritual connection? Because I know we can meet on many levels. We can date on many levels. We can, you know, have intimacy on many levels. We was enjoying so, each other. Company. We were just enjoying each other. Uh, it wasn't all. Yeah, no physical. No physical. Yeah, no physical. We were just enjoying each other's company. I, I guess it was more on a. We had a social connection. Okay. Yeah, I think it was more of a social connection. Like, I like hanging out with him. He like hanging out with me. Like, that was the first words that he said to initiate, okay, maybe this is more yeah. than what it is. He, he turned went. around. He was walking out that door right there with his little lugs on, <laughs> his mountain gear coat. She hated the way I dressed. I was he had some deep. blue lugs. I was wrong. Wrong. <laughs> 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 I was going to throw it. I was going to throw it. out. I was going to throw it. I was like, why she like me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Why did she like me? Oh, yeah, my God. And the way he said it was so cute and it was so straightforward. He was like, you know, mm-hmm. I just wanted to say I really enjoy spending time with you. And I never heard mm-hmm. anybody speak to me. In that manner, you know, everybody's like, oh, you fine, oh, you this, you that, you, you know what I mean? But I never heard anybody just to say, I really enjoy spending time with you, you know, can we do this again? Wow. And um, that was like, I was like, yeah. You like, know. oh, this is romance. Is yeah, that, this, this is what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was we subtle. Went, we went to basically an art gallery because it was next to a spot where the boy could jump trampoline things. So we go inside a spot. But they got art everywhere, so we walking around looking at the art, guessing the prices. Like we really enjoyed being around each other, and mm-hmm. it was no, I wasn't touching her, she wasn't touching me, and it wasn't like that. It was just like, and it was mad cool. And plus, I was learning a whole life because I was video recording, and mm-hmm. and she knew stuff about me from my boys, mm-hmm. and her best friend is married to one of my best friends, so. It was she had information on me and I'm pretty sure she'd say it, she called people and asked about me. <laughs> right. I mean I did my research of course. I ain't just hey, three weeks, let me run in. But yeah, I did my research but from that I think what's the problem now with relationships is people don't know how to settle down to a good choice. Everybody's looking for the ideal. Everybody is looking for this 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 perfect ideal and they don't know how to completely settle down to a good choice and initially in relationships what people do is tell everybody about that relationship and once you do that you open the relationship up to all sorts of criticisms that then in your mind you can do your research on somebody without saying that you like them you don't have to tell everybody who you're interested in initially you don't have to tell everybody that you like them you know you don't have to reveal any of that you can do your research keep that part private that is private to you it's a level of secrecy um to you because i think in that initial phase right there that's the important time for you to see for yourself I want to see for myself who this person is without all of everybody like, girl, did you see the loves he got on? I'm not dress. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I can't believe you with him. He dressed like that. Or he don't, he do this. Or I heard he was with, you know, none of that. Talk to actual people who know them, their mother. I talked to his mother, um, friends who had grown up with him for 15, 20 years. You know, those type of people. And I did not tell them that we were getting into a relationship even down to the point of we getting married even my best friend found out they found out like a day before or a couple of days before that we were actually getting married um and i I, and i actually ruined some friendships behind that but because everybody thought hey you should tell me you should tell me no it was it was too quick to tell people on top of that we just got together i just felt like Logically, that wasn't an intelligent, especially when I knew what I was doing and I had done my research and I was comfortable enough do. to make my decision um, for myself. And so I encourage you that if you're in love with someone or you're pursuing or you're thinking about uh, being with a person, do your research, but don't tell everybody. You don't have to tell everybody that you're in a relationship initially. You don't have to tell everybody that... 
um, that, oh, I like this person. I think that in the beginning just allows a whole bunch of drama. We are dramaful people and we love the drama and we love the like, ooh, I'm a, I'm giving you straight talk, but really I'm hating. It ain't straight talk, it's just hate. You know, so like all those different types of things, you just have to be really mindful. Um uh, also because we met and married so quick, I calculated I had to open totally up. I gave her access to everything, mm-hmm. to my email, to my phone. Mm-hmm. Like I have nothing to hide. Mm-hmm. You don't That's really know me. That was a big. That was a big goal for me. That was like, okay, because my I'm a root chakra person. My root chakra has is my number thing is security. Access to my inbox. You can go yeah, through my old so messages. Yeah, so like insecurity. <laughs> I was able to read his old message of like how he tried to kick at the girls. I just needed to know what his mental state like. What was his whole psychology like? And, you know, it just came out favorable, you know, all all the way around on all fronts. So, I was able to um, move forward with confidence. That was in needed. My that chakra. Was, that's needed. Especially, mm-hmm. especially uh, there's a lot of people that has trust issues. And the reason why they have trust issues is because they've been let down repeatedly. So many times. So many mm-hmm. times in, in the area of trust. Right somebody really so. Yeah, somebody cheating, doing this, conniving, sleeping with their friends. Like, mm-hmm. I heard all kinds of wild stories. So, if a person is unsecure in that area, and you know that they're unsecure. Ooh, my phone died. Yeah. You mm-hmm. should... You should, if that's who you decide to be with, you should do what you need to do to help make them feel mm-hmm. secure. Now, if they want to continue to carry it out after you did what you could mm-hmm. do to show who you are, then it's like, it's, yeah. it's, that's their fault. It's on them. But you should. Like, I took it on me to open up so much so that we don't have to deal with her thinking that I'm going out to sleep with somebody. I'm not going to, I don't, that's not, that's not the, the vibration and the frequency that I'm on. You would never have to worry about me having to go and trying mm. to get some whatever. That's not me. <laughs> you never have to worry about that. The things you got to worry about is these things, and this is what we got to focus on, you know. <laughs> and, and I needed her to be on that page with me, so therefore I had to open up the book so she could flip through it and understand who, who she's dealing with. And I suggest that, especially for men that's dealing with, with women that have been through things in their past. You need to open up so that they can feel secure. And if you're not willing to make them feel secure, then you probably need to keep it moving. Yeah, like, no, don't play with these women. Either be with them 100% or don't be with them at all. You know, and if you... Yeah, that's it. So, let's let's reach out to... Um, find some stones that we probably can share um, to the community. What kind of stone? Somebody tell us their favorite color. Somebody that's watching. Yes, your favorite, favorite color. color. What did now? What did just come up? Yeah. Uh, Y'all know type I'm, it in. You'll yeah, type it in. Yeah, okay. Type in the comments. Drop in the comments your favorite color. Yeah, Raymond and Gwen. Is that Gwen? Somebody said purple. 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 Mm-hmm. purple. Oh, purple. Here we go. You can hold it up a little closer so they can see it. Okay. Purple, that is amethyst. Amethyst. A lot of people know amethyst from being a February's birthstone. Um, And so a lot of people are used to that from the natural sun centers and the different places where they go. But amethyst really is a stone that is for the intuition. It is for peace. It's for tranquility. Um, It's also been called the sobriety stone because it's believed to help people when they're inebriated to sober up. Um, It helps deal with any type of addictions or compulsions, um, OCD type of behaviors. It's really good for psychic protection. I don't know if we listed it on the top five, but it's one of those. It's it's, it's the fifth one that you could alternate. I almost said it. Yeah, amethyst is one of those stones that is really good for that. Um, um, It helps protect your mind, but it's an overall spiritual stone. So when you're stepping into a new level of spirituality, amethyst will help guide you uh, through that space. Drop yes. another color. Blue. Somebody blue. blue. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I don't think it's up there. I'm going to have to go over here. <laughs> blue. Reach in for a lot of blue. What blue am I going to grab? Ah, turkinite. 
Turkonite. I don't have that one. Turkonite is a dyed form of halite. Um, Turkonite is really good for um, communication, working with the throat chakra, but it carries primarily the properties of halite, which is for to help with insomnia, calming, racing thoughts. The blue, it gets its um, vibration mainly from its color vibration. So what you'll learn about stones is they're different colors, and each color carries a vibration. If I put on a blue shirt, y'all probably would have saw me as a more calm person. I probably would have talked. <laughs> A lot calmer. I wouldn't have been so ah. <laughs> but um, so you can change colors of your room, colors of your environment, what you wear to kind of match your mood and to give off a certain vibration. So, um, turkonite is a dyed form of halite, and it's really really good for um, helping with criticism. So like how you give out that criticism, not to be overly critical of yourself or overly critical of others, but to give the criticism in a um, kind and loving way. Ooh. This is Tiger's Eye. And mm -hmm. this is a special piece of Tiger's Eye. This is actually from Namibia. And uh, I really love this. This is a raw stone. So you'll notice that some stones are polished. That amethyst stone. Let me see the amethyst stone. This is what they call a cluster, and clusters have tiny little points, crystals. Clusters give off energy in a lot of different ways um, because of the tiny little points and the crystals off of there. So it gives off a subtle energy, but an energy in multiple different ways. Um, polished stones are just stones that have been run through a tumbler for a series of weeks to make it more polished and smooth, and they... They tend to, people tend to like raw better because raw doesn't have any chemical on it. It's natural. It comes straight from the earth. Um, clusters, that's what you see. They'll come from the earth. And these, this is what they call a rough, raw stone. This is tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is for strength, loyalty, protection, prosperity. Um, it's a solar plexus chakra stone. So the solar plexus is really good when there's your seat of your will is, your determination, your self-esteem, your career and finances, your ability to get things done. Um, that's your solar plexus chakra and tiger's eye. It's really good for that. What else? Ooh. So this is an interesting stone. So to tell you about um, how these stones work, this is actually pre-night. And uh, on it's pre night on a blue chalcedony matrix. So, what does that mean? Question. So, pre night and pyrite that's two different, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sure yeah. That. So, pre night is a stone for healing the healer. So, if you are a healer, then you want pre night because mm -hmm. a lot of times we deplete our energy as healers and we need to replenish that energy and give some of that healing energy back to ourselves. So, this pre night. Um, is very, very unique in that it's druzy um, and that it's on a blue chalcedony matrix. So oftentimes you may see the stones separate, but stones grow with other stones and that's what they call a matrix. They grow together. So um, yeah, and blue chalcedony is another throat chakra stone. It helps with calm speech. So if you tend to be fiery with that tongue, Blue Chalcedony helps calm it down. <laughs> Just calm it down so you can communicate yeah, in a more right. loving, calm, smooth way. Did you have a fiery tongue? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Very fiery. Fiery, fiery. Yeah. That's me too. This is moss agate. And this is, the, I thought this was my pretty piece of moss agate. I probably had to sell this one. What is my pretty piece of moss? But this is um, moss agate. And moss agate is for success and abundance. Success and abundance, um, this happens to be a sheet. So if you see, it's very thin. Oftentimes, lapidaries like to buy stones in sheets like this so that they can cut it into what they call a cabochon. And cabochons are really good for making jewelry, like if you are soldering jewelry and using fire to make jewelry. Uh, moss agate um, is really good for those who want to work with agriculture, like gardening, um, being out in nature, it is a root chakra stone as well as heart chakra. So, moss agate. And this is a gift. So, every time people give me a stone, I keep it. This was by the leg legendary Santos. So, y'all make sure y'all go follow Santos. So, on, no, he might just be Santos on Facebook. I don't know. 
But just type in Santos in Google <laughs> and you will find him. He is one of look our through, really look good our friend list and find Santos. Yeah, a um, really, really good friend of mine. He makes music. He's an amazing, amazing artist. Please, if you just Google his name, Jonathan Santos, you can download his music and all that on Bandcamp. But this is a, a citrine and a clear quartz. Mm, oh. So this one, the unique thing about this is you have two different types of citrine. You have citrine that's been heat treated, um, and that's 95% of the citrine on the market is a heat treated amethyst. So really it's not citrine, but they're allowed to sell it by the gym association, and it works. It does work with the solar plexus chakra because of its color vibration. But it primarily carries the property of amethyst, which is really good for intuition, um, insight um, at its core. But this citrine was naturally heated. They actually found this, um, he found this in the Union Tunji village in South Carolina um, in the ground. So this was actually pulled out of the ground. And so it's one of my special pieces. Every time somebody gives me a piece, I absolutely love it. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cool with that or you want more? Mm -hmm. You got a brand new selenite over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is selenite. Selenite is a stone that people use to clear energy. You can get selenite and put them all around your house, on the tables, in the corners, outside. If you really want the energy in your rooms to stay, I mean, big pieces. If y'all ever watch Erica Badu and her little mm, videos, a selenite. lot of times you'll see big pieces of selenite. And selenite is very, um, fairly inexpensive, so you can get it pretty much anywhere. But this selenite towers cleanse anything that it comes in contact with. So stones have to be cleansed regularly. Um, so you could put these two together in a bag and it will cleanse the energy. Or if this one would sit on top of this, you can use it to cleanse the energy of it too as well. I would tell people from a one-on-one. Oh, fluoride. <laughs> this is a rainbow fluorite. Um, this is given to me by Sarah. Shout out to the mystical whisperer. <laughs> but um, this fluorite is actually, uh, this is beautiful fluorite. But fluorite is for mental organization and organizing the thoughts. It is a third eye and a crown chakra stone. Um, also the blue, sometimes you'll see it have some blue in it, which can be used for the throat chakra too as well. Really good if you're having a lot of thoughts coming to your head and you're having trouble with putting them in order and kind of prioritizing things. Fluorite is really good for that. If you tend to be junky and cluttery, it ain't going to help you if you're nasty. If you're nasty, you just need to clean up. But if you, tend to, if you tend to have a little clutter and be disorganized, then fluorite is really good for this. Wow. So we just learned the whole entire time this was CK's piece. And we thought that this was tourmalated quartz. Because it looks like black tourmaline and quartz. But we found out that this is a very rare piece of calcite. Mm. Calcite and this black um, inclusions. I forgot what they told us it was. I forgot this merlinite is in this, in this uh, calcite. And you very rarely see calcite shoot out in points. This is what they call a flower. And that's what Zach has on an amethyst flower. His just happens to be a little bit younger. So when it's younger, Zach's probably is about 50,000 years old. And this is probably about 100,000 or 150,000 years old. Oh, wow. um, so you can tell a stone by its points, usually how old it is, or either the layers located within the stone, like, kind of like a tree trunk. Um, the layers represent thousands of years. So what's next for you guys? Woo! Next 2008, we are currently on Copper Tour, Copper and Tour. we love Zach Neal so much. <laughs> yeah. We came back from Copper Tour just to do this interview. So we are currently on Copper Tour. We've hit five cities already. Um, we've been to Isle of Palms, a little island outside of South Carolina. Absolutely loved it, loved it, loved it. Shout out to people in the people there. Oh my God! It's <laughs> She's gonna get me. Um, why oh, am I drawing a blank? Oh. Deborah, Deborah, yes, Deborah. <laughs> Shout out to Deborah, um, who 
came out to uh, the Isle of Palms, out to our condo, hung out with us, got some jewelry. Um, and then we went into Charleston, uh, South Carolina, and we were able to connect with so many people there, so many new people. It was actually doing Kwanzaa, so we got to be a part wow. of a Kwanzaa celebration and listen in on that and give away free stones to everybody there who was um, there for the Kwanzaa celebration. We left there and headed to Brunswick, Georgia. We didn't really do much in Brunswick. Then we pulled out. It was kind of like a resting midpoint. Then we pulled out and headed to Orlando. And Orlando showed us so much love. Yeah. Shout out to Sanabia. She's a Copper Vibe Tribe yeah. member. She gave us free tickets to SeaWorld. So we, I was able to go to SeaWorld. I was stressed. Like, I'm going to get to SeaWorld. I need to get tickets. <laughs> and she came through with that. Plus a parking pass. Wow. So um, shout out to Sanabia who really um, helped us with that. We also had Copper Vibe Tribe member uh, Foster Tay Tay. Uh, Taria Foster, who came through with her daughter, showed so much love, bought so many pieces of jewelry. Um, Sanabia got the lion. She ended up uh, purchasing a lion and like mm. a heart of a diamond this mm. big. No exaggeration. Um, so she got a, a huge heart of a diamond. And uh, who else came through? Patricia Jones. Shout out to Patricia Jones. She's always on the live. And she came through while we were in Orlando. What's her name? Who? Oh, and Zach. I mean, not Zach. Theo. Theo, yeah. Theo. Shout out to Theo, Theo who came oh, all the way yeah, from yeah. Texas. Pulled yeah. up in Orlando. Yeah. Pulled right up to the hotel. Got off the highway. Came straight to us. Sold us some stones. He had some old devices, some other little stones. I was like, what you got in that bag? Give me that bag. <laughs> so I went through, digging through his box and bought some stones from him. Uh, he picked up a bracelet that he bought from us. So it was really, it was really cool um, to connect with Theo. And then we left there and headed to Palm Bay. Um, and in Palm Bay, I got to meet with a friend whom I haven't seen in nine years. She was like my best friend in the entire world. And so I was able to connect with her, hang out with her for a couple of days. She helped me on the live and different things like that. Then we headed back to Columbia. And then Columbia came through. Uh, Wendy, Copper Vibe Tribe member Wendy. Um... um LaRonda Guignol, I guess. I was like, who? She um, was always on the live. Y'all see her on the live all the time. She came through. Um, and we plan on seeing Ebony and, oh, one more person, Nicole Rivers. Nicole Cherie Rivers um, plans on coming through on Sunday. We are headed to Charleston, South Carolina. So if anybody's in the Charleston, South Carolina, we are doing a copper um, twist class so ck is teaching folks how to do copper if you want to bring us to your city to do a copper class we only require that um the entry fee be 50 dollars, and it's a 60 40 split so we take 60 y'all take 40 percent um and that you lock in at least 10 people and then we'll show up we'll pull up with all our tools your your folks get to keep their jewelry whatever they make they get to keep it and take it home with them as a memento and ck doesn't hold anything back he's really good at teaching during that class so if you want to bring us to your city then go ahead and get it clapping yeah. awesome awesome and uh for everybody who's watching we are in the process of planning atlanta's copper vibration arrival because mm -hmm. they are coming there in april we're in the preliminary stages right now and it's going to be a pretty huge event and we got some talents lined up i mean it's going to be a whole big whole big thing so we're excited about that anything you want to say zach um i'm just glad to be here and i we thank you guys oh, for this live and i feel all the love in the room <laughs> and this amazing energy yeah. not only is it on their live, but it's live and real and in person. I feel, I, I feel like I'm in a live, but Aww. I'm here. Oh, so, yeah. Love it. Thank okay. you, Zach. We love Zach. Zach's always love. emanate love. Mm -hmm. Like, when you think of his name being Zach Love, that's really what he embodies. And mm -hmm. I remember him from the very first time he came and got this very first piece. Yes. Um, He was so loving. He was like, I love you guys. Can you send me this? And we, we got it there. And when he got it, I said, send me a pic. And he was like, sure. And he sent me the pic. Um, and I was able to post the pic from the very first time we connected. And so I love Zach so much. If you want to be a part of the Copper Vibe Tribe, make sure you type in Copper Vibe Tribe in the search bar. 
Type in, I agree. Answer the questions. <laughs> if you don't answer the questions, you ain't getting in. Okay? <laughs> Just to let you know, my admins don't play. They better read the energy and to make sure that you follow what you're supposed to do. And we would love to have you because our next meetup and greet for the admins, for the um, admins, we're going, we have a humongous we mansion. I mean, for the for the tribe, for the CVT tribe, um, we have a big mansion here in North Carolina with waterfalls on the property. So I'm wow. so excited to go hang out with them we and just it, relax. We do it big. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to go out there with them and to relax and just hang out. So if you want to get in before April, you better hurry up and get in the tribe. Are y'all are you, are you coming? I'm going well, to. I know he's going. Yeah. I think he just mentioned it to me on the way up here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told folks that they were able to invite people if they wanted to um, come through. So, yeah. yeah. It's cool. All right, family. Well, that's all we have for you. I'm D45. And I'm Zach Love. And we really appreciate you guys stopping by and joining us. And I'm going to make sure to put our um, YouTube channel information down in the comment section as well as... Your Facebook, okay, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her Facebook information. So if you guys want to um, contact her or any jury, you'll have that information readily available. And y'all are going live tonight, right? Yes, we always live. Make sure y'all you can text Copper Vibes to mm -hmm. five five two 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 to be notified every time that we go live. Copper Vibes, all caps, all one word to 55222 and it'll notify you when we are live and we're happy to meet you and happy to welcome you into the copper family yeah and be ready because let me tell you it gets very addictive sometimes <laughs> and you get in your feelings especially when you don't know the name of the stones right and she tell you i want you to put in the initials and it's like i don't know the name of it what so are the initials in every city that we went into people have said this to me so i'm gonna have to figure something out because i promise you every city and every person that we meet in personally you know, always say my motto is get in where you fit in <laughs> 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 we be fighting over that jury. We be fighting over that jury on that live. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Remember that if anyone haven't told you that they love you today, we are telling you that we love you. You have a good day, and we will be in touch. Peace. Peace. Peace, peace. <laughs> peace in the root. <laughs> peace.